Hi, my name is Kelvin. I'm a product marketing manager here on the Flutter team, and I've got five minutes to recap the biggest news from Flutter and Dart at Google I.O. this year. Ready, set, and go. If the words Dash and AI being in the same sentence gets you fired up, be sure to check out I.O. Flip, an AI card game built for I.O. 2023. Generate a hand of cards based on a prompt you help put together, and then use those cards to battle other players in a race to the top of a worldwide leaderboard. If you want to play or are interested in getting to the code, head to flutter.dev slash flip. While you do that, I'll be enjoying this bagel provided by my new best friend, Bagel Mage Dash. He can also shoot bagel lasers. So watch yourself now. Okay, enough with the chit chat. Let's get to business. To begin, we've got to take a short trip. Earlier this year at Flutter Forward, we said Karibu to our friends in Nairobi and set out Flutter's vision for the next few years. It can be summed up into four themes. Continued focus on developer experience, breakthrough graphics performance, seamless integration for web, desktop, and mobile, and early arrival to new and emerging architectures. Let's see where we are on some of those things. First up, we just announced Flutter 310 a release focused on helping you more productively build engaging, smooth, and expressive experiences, regardless of target platform. On mobile, we previously announced support for Impeller on iOS, a new rendering engine built for Flutter to maximize performance and quality, now turned on by default. Impeller should help with complex animations at experience shank. For a deep dive of Impeller, check out Leah and Brandon's talk. We're working on a new tool called JNI Gen that can automatically generate Dart bindings for Android APIs available in Java or Call and Code. After generating the bindings, you can go ahead and call the API like any other Dart code. Use this alongside FFI Gen for iOS and macOS for easy interop across Flutter's most popular build targets. Hopefully, you could spend the valuable time you save doing more important things, like playing IO Flip. To learn more about JNI Gen, Check out our Google I.O. talk, Rethinking Dart Interop with Android for more details. Other big news on the mobile front includes improved support for Material 3, which now supports algorithmic color schemes, so you can generate a complete and accessible color scheme from an image, a fresh new drop-down menu, navigation drawer, secondary tabs, and a brand new search bar widget. To learn more about all of the new Material updates, check out Rodi's talk on designing for every device with Flutter and Material 3. Next, we'll tackle the web. The number one request we've heard from Flutter web users has been apps that load faster and perform better. To help, we reduced the size of the Canvas Kit rendering engine, the largest component inside a Flutter app, by about one third. And we now use static analysis information from the Dart compiler to tree shake unused icons from material font during compilation. Both things together reduced the load time of the standard counter app by 40%. We're also excited about features like full support for element embedding and custom shaders on the web, which will make you more productive and help your apps shine. All these features are now available and stable. As you can likely tell, there's a whole lot more to explore to Flutter on the web. So check out Kevin's talk on how we're evolving our support for the web. Google I.O. marked the official release of Dart 3, which includes three major improvements. First, the culmination of the multi-year journey towards 100% null safety which means all code now has sound and all safety, reducing runtime errors and improving performance. Second, the introduction of language features like records for quickly building structured data and patterns, which make it easier to write code that is conditional on the structure or values of data and then destructure it back down into its individual parts. Third, we added class modifiers to give Dart developers more control over class capabilities. To dive deeper into what's cooking with Dart, check out Michael's blog post. There are a couple updates for the ecosystem surrounding Flutter and Dart as well. In the packages space, we announced that pub.dev search results can now include screenshots as declared by a package. Package authors can add up to five categories to make their packages more searchable. To explore more about building packages, check out John and Jonas's talk. In the world of security, we announced that our entire build infrastructure supports Salsa, a vendor neutral initiative supported by Google to provide a set of standards and technical controls to help ensure artifact integrity. There are three security levels for Salsa. We're happy to announce that we've cleared the first level and we're working on achieving all three levels soon. If you'd like to learn more about our work in this area, you can read more in the What's New in Flutter 310 blog post. The last thing any of us want are unauthorized changes to the Flutter source repo. So we'll keep salsa until we get there. So far, we've talked about the things that are available today, but I'd like to get back to the future. We're previewing the ability to compile Dart and Flutter code to WebAssembly, or WASM for short, via the new standard track garbage collection feature. 
We believe this will lead to faster load times and more responsiveness for everyone, among other benefits. To learn more about Wasm, check out flutter.dev slash Wasm. As you can see, there's a ton to be excited about both today and coming soon for Flutter. We talked through a lot of it, but definitely not all. There's plenty more to explore from Flutter and Dart at Google I.O. Head over to the Google I.O. website and check the Flutter and Dart boxes to find more exciting demos and tech talks. Until next time, peace out.